Can you hear me, Gail? I, I can hear you. Okay. I don't know if you hear me. Okay, thanks, George. I'm glad you can hear me. I do project and I talk right into the microphone because I listen to you. Um, Gail, can we begin the meeting or did you want to test it? No, go ahead. Okay. Okay, very good. Good evening and welcome to the April 1st Town Council meeting. Councillor Latina, would you lead us with the pledge, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation. Thank you. So we're told that there may be some um, technical difficulties with the audiovisual. I hope that the volume, the sound at least, is coming out. We've been told that the um, image may not be projecting well on the television, and we apologize for that. We are, we're trying to work it out. Um, would the town clerk please take attendance? Councilor Breton? Here. Councilor Forrest? Here. Councilor Hurley? Here. Councilor Latina? Sorry. Here. Councilor Lesser? Here. Councilor Rell? Here. Councilor Spinella is unable to attend. Deputy Mayor Martino? Here. And Mayor Morin Bello? Here. Thank you. Thank you. Our next order of business is to present a proclamation. We have Anne Marie and Jen here to receive it. Come on up. This microphone works. There you go. So the proclamation is for the 2019 National Public Health Week. Whereas the American Public Health Association has proclaimed April 1st through April 7, 2019 as National Public Health Week. And whereas this year's theme is creating the healthiest nation for science, for action, for health and focuses on the role of public health and prevention in assuring the social determinants of health, and whereas the public health system that keeps our communities healthy and safe is changing as technologies advance, public attitudes towards health shifts, and more health and safety options become available through policy changes. And whereas National Public Health Week reminds us each year of the fundamental role that our own state and local health departments play every day in the health of our communities. And whereas the town of Wethersfield, together with its neighboring towns of Berlin, Rocky Hill, and Newington, receives quality public health through services through its regional health department, the Central Connecticut Health District, now in its 23rd year of service. Now, therefore, on behalf of the town council, I, Amy Morin Bello, mayor of the town of Wethersfield, do hereby proclaim April 1st to April 7, 2019, as National Public Health Week in Wethersfield. I encourage all our citizens to join me in this celebration in acknowledging the critical role of public health in prevention and in helping individuals and communities to achieve and maintain good health. In witness whereof, I hereunto set my hand and cause the seal of the town of Wethersfield to be affixed this first day of April, 2019. And I'd like to thank you both for all of your work that you do. Would either of you like to speak? Just to thank the, uh, the town council, and also it is our pleasure to serve. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amy. Okay, um, I'm not as loud here as I was over there. Um, next we have public comment. Are there any members of the public who'd like to speak tonight? You may come up and state your name and address and speak for five minutes. Mr. Mazzarella. Good evening, Tom Mazzarella, 600 Walcott Hill Road. Uh, I wanted to uh, talk briefly about the Tremco roof maintenance contract. Uh, and back in November on the 19th, uh, we had a council meeting and uh, I brought up the topic of this Tremco contract. I was inquiring about uh, annual or uh, yearly report that they 
I understood that they provided, and I was questioning why the uh, condition of the elementary school roofs uh, hadn't been brought up in that Tremco report. I never did hear back about that, but I guess on tonight's agenda, we're going to be you're going to be talking about uh, roof repairs to the South Dean Middle School, and again, I'm questioning whether those deficient uh, roof sections were called out in this Tremco report, uh, or was this like a surprise? Um, I was also at a planning and zoning meeting on uh, February 5th, I believe it was, where the uh, Capital Improvements Committee presented all the capital items for this year's budget, some $900,000 worth. And, uh, there wasn't much listed as far as major roof projects. The elementary school roofs weren't listed in that $900,000 spending. There was $68,000 for renewal of the Tremco uh, contract. And again, I'd like to know what, exactly what that contract is supposed to do. And if they're supposed to be telling us that the roofs need to be replaced, I think you know, we're not getting what we're paying for or we're getting a report and somebody's leaving it on the bookshelf and not reading it and not taking any action on it. Uh, <clears throat> there was also um, $25,000 for infrared roof investigations to identify and prioritize roofing needs. So again, th there was no mention of the South Dean Middle School roof needing to be repaired or replaced. And uh, I'm all for replacing the roofs. I think, you know, that's the uh, primary goal of, of uh, maintaining a building is to prevent all this water from infiltrating and doing all kinds of damage. But uh, it's uh, somewhat predictable. The roofs have a finite uh, age. Uh, there's discussion about a 20-year warranty. That shouldn't be confused with the useful life of a roof uh, you know, just like your car, you might get a five-year warranty on your car, but that doesn't mean it needs to be replaced after five years. <clears throat> the other thing I wanted to mention that uh, caught my attention was this uh, uh, announcement that came out about this United Way ALICE program, ALICE standing for Asset Limited Income Constrained Employed. So the thing that jumped out at me was there's 34% of Wethersfield households uh, would meet that criteria. So, you know, one of every three families in town is struggling, and these are households that are struggling to make ends meet. Um, and I hope that you'll keep that in your mind when you're doing your budget proposals, because it's great to have uh, you know, food bank and charity balls that raise money for less fortunate, but we need to really take a serious look at reducing the cost of living in Wethersfield, primarily property taxes. I, I think everybody is under the incorrect assumption that Wethersfield's an affluent community. That may have been true 20 something years ago, but that's not the case now. And there's a lot of people that are just getting by, um, and we need to keep that in mind when we talk about spending everybody's hard-earned money. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak tonight? Mr. Young? Good evening, Robert Young, 20 Copper Mill Road. And Tom is right. There is a large percentage of people that live in this town that are short on the dollar side. And uh, you people have never realized who they are, nor have you helped them. You've pushed them down by raising taxes, by spending so wild with, with our money and with our borrowed money just like you are with the Keisha farm. I continue to talk about the Keisha farm and, and, and comparable properties. 
in the valley here and within Connecticut that prices are nowhere near, especially in the valley here, this Connecticut Valley, nowhere near what you were going to pay for the Keisha farm, $75,000 an acre. I keep coming up with more properties to talk about from the podium regarding their sale prices. I don't see but a few sales. I see a few reductions in prices from those that I have mentioned in the past. But again, uh, town of Cheshire, for instance, there was two new ones that just came on the market. A 15-acre parcel for $500,000. That's half of your 32000 roughly. And it's only $500,000, where you're going to pay 2.4 for 32 acres. Maybe it's because Weathersfield's so expensive, and maybe the, the price demands it, but I don't think so. It just takes a bunch of fools to, put, to agree to such a deal. There's another property in Cheshire, Connecticut as well, that just came on the market, 50 acres, for $976,000. Again, your 32 acres that are going to cost $2.4 million is pretty ridiculous. And also in Cheshire, there's seven properties of acreage for sale. Not one of those others have sold, or have I seen that they're on, 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 on contract. In the town of uh, Haddam, there's several as well that I've talked about. And there's a new one, 48 acres, closer to your price, $1.5 million. But that's $31,000 an acre. You're paying $75,000. Pretty damn high, I would say. We have more. Enfield. We have two of them. 32 acres for $220,000. We have another one up there for 81 acres for $950,000. I know you can smile all you want, Mr. Lesser, but this is, ca this is real money. And you voted for $2.4 million for a piece of property that's not worth anything near that price tag. Adam, 62 acres you could buy down there for $400,000. That's incredible. And again, there's more. Tallinn has, has another one, 57 acres for $330,000. I don't know how your appraiser ever justified advising you to spend $2.4 million when Prices are all over this, these, these low prices. And, and why are these prices low? If you looked in the Hartford Current and read about home sales are down for the seventh month in a row, we see the, the volume is down, the dollar amount per home is down. And I think it said between last year and this year, we're looking at a 5% decrease in the price of a home here in central Connecticut. And there's all kinds of articles out there. This home sales are struggling. You ought to go read that, or maybe I'll send it to you tonight. But you really should read that because it, ta it, it gets even deeper. It gets deeper into the fact that the state of Connecticut reported we put it on, we brought on 20,000 new jobs last year, when in fact we only put on 10,000. Boy, I'd like to know who the, who the individuals were that came up with the 20,000, who they were out to please. Us? The politicians up in Harford? And then it turns out it was only 10,000? The reason you get 10,000 shows that why our prices are going down in value in our, in our neighborhoods. Okay, and wrap, wrap it up, Mr. Yes, Young. I will Thank now. You. And, 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 and because of this, we're losing people left and right. Yet, how, like I said, one, one, other, one other evening here, the price of this Akisha farm is on a scale is going to go up like this and the next day or the day after, it's going to go way back down to reality. 
it's going to be a horrendous spike. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, madam. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak tonight? Mr. Rue, come on up. It's good to see you again. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to be back. I mean, it's, it's a different evening for me these days. It's, uh, usually I'm watching. Don't count the time until I'm starting to talk, all right? I'm just shooting the breeze for the moment. <laughs> and don't tell me when the five minutes are up, because Woody Warren one time told the council, my time ain't up yet. I'm, he's still around <laughs> kicking. And, well, he ultimately left. <laughs> but, but in any event. For the record, name and address. Oh, yes, yeah, for the record. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm forgetting these things already. George A. Rue, 956 Cloverdale Circle, Weathersfield, Connecticut. Uh, first of all, uh, I'd like to welcome the new town manager. I never got a chance to meet him. Uh, I will maybe someday. Uh, I've often visited, uh, often shared my thoughts and opinions on a lot of stuff, and you know, it's, it's worth doing. And uh, so welcome aboard and hope things go well. Uh, another thought that went through my mind quickly is uh, I'm glad some of our younger people are watching the dollars that this town is spending and they're doing that and they have to do that. And that's an appropriate thing for our younger citizens to do. When you get to be my age, hey, it doesn't have to go too many more years. <laughs> so I'm not too terribly worried about it. My concerns have more to do with the policies that are taking this country of mine and yours down the tubes. And I worry about that. That's my great concern these days. And as I've watched occasional meetings at home, if I don't fall asleep, uh, a couple of things have caught my attention, caught my eye. Some time back, Jim Clinch got up and spoke about his opinions relative to the town's handling of the Memorial Day Parade, Memorial Day Parade. And I had to agree with him. I was planning to come to the next meeting, but I never made it. And as you may or may not know, I have spoken any one of a number of times. I've spoken with the Memorial Day Committee, and I have been appalled, as Jim Clinch has been, as to what Memorial Day has become to, what has come to be the meaning to many, many Americans. It's a celebration that is more appropriate for the 4th of July vis-a-vis -vis in memory of those men from my generation in World War II to the other wars that this country has been continually involved in and have made the supreme sacrifice. It concerns me. And my feeling is our town leadership should stop and take stock, not for this one because it's too late, but as in the future, start thinking about what the meaning of Memorial Day is all about, okay? And it's to memorize, to keep a memory of those men who made the supreme sacrifice. Not guys like me. I was in the war, but I came back unscathed, and so what? You know, I'm a, I'm a citizen. When I die, I'm going to die. So that doesn't call for any special treatment. So I, I just share that particular thought with you. And there were a lot of comments that... I hear about the, you know, the, the, the speaker and the, the, the introducing every Tom, Dick, and Harry and stuff, you know, and, and it, it just is inappropriate to me. And then the other thing, this historical society taking our children and our men and want to play war. They want to play war. You play with our wooden muskets. This is not something that this country needs, embracing the, or encouraging children to to, to get involved with the weaponry of war. It's a nasty game, it's very dangerous, bad for your health, okay? Uh, enough said on that. Uh, Some time back when, the, when our great leader in Washington shut down the country, uh, did he, yeah, he shut down the government, not the country, the government. Uh, there was a great deal of concern about all these federal employees being able to pay their taxes. And it's a legitimate concern for people who are unemployed, however, to single out a singular group, a particular group of people, and give them special benefits as a class, I think was, it was an inappropriate idea, and I was glad to see. I never heard it come up again, and I, uh, the, it was brought up by Mr. Rell, and I had to agree that that made a lot of sense. So for the future, if this happens, you know, these people are unemployed. Let them join the rest of the unemployed people that are in the country and suffer the same kind of consequences and suffer the same kinds of problems. They're not a special class, okay? Uh, last but not least, 
The, uh, the other thing that caught my attention was the, a recent discussion by, uh, on Facebook. Now, Facebook, I get these messages on Facebook quite often. But I didn't even have to turn the damn thing on, and I don't. I don't send it. I don't watch it. I don't read it. I, I look at some of the stuff that, that, that people I know send, and I say, oh, my God, what are we doing? Why? Uh, there was a very interesting article very shortly thereafter from the... Uh, Fake news. It was in the fake news of the, uh, of the uh, New York Times, you know, that one of those it's a bit bad paper. You know, I get it every day. I've been getting it for years. And it had to do with Facebook and the fact that Facebook, there, there are some problems in, in, in terms of free, uh, uh, free speech and so forth and so on that's in the court system somehow or another or whatever and whatever and whatever. I don't even know all of the details. But it... I'll just read one or two paragraphs here from this newspaper article, and uh, and a lot of it evolved about a lot of it evolved about. I'll be almost done. All right, yeah, wrap it up. <laughs> when I'm know. done, I'm going to be done. All right? <laughs> wrap it up. Don't disturb me. <laughs> a, a lot of this has to do with the reaction that Twitter causes. We're running the country by by way of Twitter. It drives me kind of crazy half the, half the time, but in any event, the uh, it it talks about. Public officials everywhere are increasing turning to Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to act with, interact with constituents beyond town halls or city council meetings, et cetera, et cetera. And there are free speech issues that start to surface. The, that didn't surface in my mind. I just, what surfaced in my mind as I listened to this presentation was I could see all of our town employees fidd fiddling around with Facebook, sending Facebook here, Facebook there. and. Maybe they don't do that. Maybe they can't do that. I'm not sure. I don't know enough about it. But it just didn't strike me as an appropriate thing to provide all of our employees, or however this works, uh, to fiddle around with Facebook. So with that said, thank you. OK. Thanks, Georgia. We're, we're actually drafting social media policies currently. Um, and then, yeah. Yeah, just, yeah, you want to just mention to George about the June 6th George, uh, just to let you know, on June 6th, we'll be celebrating the 75th anniversary of D-Day, and we'll have a big public program uh, at the high school, at the football field. Uh, so hopefully you can make it, and if you want to participate in talking to students, but it's June 6th, uh, 2019. On D-Day. On D-Day, yes. I participated in a similar program back in, on the 50th anniversary of D-Day at the high school, and at that time they showed... A, the movie Schindler's List, and it talked about the concentration camps in Germany that happened, and I saw it during the war. And uh, I have noticed that particular uh, event, and I'll have to see how I feel and how things go. Okay. Thank you. I'll talk to you a little bit. Thank you. I'd Perfect. Like to. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, is there anybody else who would like to speak tonight? Anybody else who'd like to speak? All right, seeing no one, we will move on in the agenda. Um, we have no hearings on ordinances or resolu uh, resolutions. We have no presentations this evening, so we'll move into reports from boards and commissions. Do any council members have reports? Deputy Mayor? Uh, I just want to say last Friday uh, there was a uh, grand, grand reopening and um, ribbon cutting at Price Right for uh, the renovations they did down there. There was a proclamation from the mayor that was read. Uh, councilors Hurley, Forrest, and myself were there, the town manager and some staff. And uh, if anybody hasn't been in there since they made those renovations, they really did a nice job turning it around. And uh, you know, we should visit our local establishments and support them wherever we can. Thank you. Anybody else? Councilor Lesser? Thank you, Mayor. So on Saturday, uh, this past Saturday, the Veterans Committee did a retreat right here in uh, beautiful Town Hall to discuss short-term and long-term goals for the Veterans Committee, which, as most of you know, is newly appointed. We did talk about the June 6th uh, D-Day celebration, but we also talked about um, what our short-term goals and what our long-term goals, and we also used the occasion to get to know the folks on the committee a little better. We had to say what our most daring thing we ever did. We had to describe why we're in the committee and why veterans issues are important to us, but also <laughs> the most daring thing we were ever involved in. But some of the things that real quickly we, we are looking to do in addition to the June 6th um, celebration is to uh, educate, uh, help educate veterans in Wethersfield 
on the different services that are provided at the local, state, and federal level. Uh, there is a feeling that some veterans know that very well and others don't. And unfortunately, we do have a lot of um, poor veterans in town. Over a 1,000 have regularly used the food bank, so that was a key thing that we came up with. And another one that um, you know was a lot of discussion about uh, in the D-Day event is one thing that's helping with that, but how can we have students uh, better understand what it was like to be a veteran and how can we see if uh, veterans would be willing to volunteer and maybe talk to students beyond that one event that we're doing June, June 6th. But it was a really good meeting. I want to give credit to Doug Shipman, who did an excellent job of facilitating the meeting retreat uh, on Saturday a couple of days ago. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Anybody else have a report? Okay. Um, next, we'll move into discussion items, budget timeline and schedule. Mr. Town Manager. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I have enclosed the updated timeline and schedule for the 2019-2020 budget process. As mentioned at the last council meeting on April 15th, I will be here to present to the council and the residents the town manager's funding recommendations for the upcoming year. Per the charter, the budget must be adopted by May 15th of this year, and the proposed schedule has us completing the process by that date, uh, with any luck a few days before then. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions from council? Okay, very good. Uh, moving into council action, I see no workshop items for referral. We'll move into Silas Dean Middle School roof replacement. Uh, the bid results. Town Manager. Thank you, Mayor. Again, this resolution. Oh yeah. Oh. How about a, sorry? How about a motion? Motion to award the Silas Dean Middle School bid to uh, Silk Town Roofing of Manchester, Connecticut, in an amount of one hundred sixty-four thousand seven hundred and ten dollars. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Thank you again, Go Mayor <laughs> and Deputy Mayor and Council. Uh, this resolution is to address deficiencies in the Silestine Middle School roof. The roofs have been ex have exceeded their life ex expectancy, wow, and are currently failing. It's necessary to address, address the roofing issues as soon as possible to ensure that there's no structural damage to the building. And I have uh, Sally Katz and Michael Emmett here to answer any questions you may have. Okay. Do you want background or questions yeah would you like to give a little background first sure. and then we'll ask some questions uh, as many of you know the Celestine Middle School is actually made up of multiple roofs and three of the roofs are close to 40 years old the main one is over the auditorium and then there is an adjacent classroom to that auditorium and another classroom uh, on the other side of the building over the years, there have been leak responses to water that has come into the auditorium, especially. Um, last year, we saw more and more of those leaks being reported. They, uh, there were leaks over the stage, which were fixed. There was leaking um, in the back towards um, the backstage of the auditorium. And what would happen is that we, Tremco would come, they would make the repairs, but we were finding as one would be shored up, we would find that there was a leak somewhere else. And what, especially this was happening during the winter time when there was ice pack, snow pack, not like um, when you would get an errant rainstorm and all of a sudden you would get leaking. This was happening starting, especially this winter, consistently to the point where we couldn't patch patches and where there was now widespread degradation of the roof, especially in the auditorium, to the point where we could not be consistently use that space to know that it would be dry so that equipment or um, props that would be used in a stage production or instruments or anything could be left there for fear that you know we would spring a leak somewhere else. And so we have not been using the auditorium at the middle school now for about six weeks. Um, we brought Tremco back in, we did a roof evaluation uh, over the auditorium and really found that that roof needs to be, needs to be replaced. In discussions with the uh, town manager and the superintendent of schools, Mr. Emmett, um, we looked at different ways to fund this project. We worked with Tremco, uh, developed a set of specifications for the base bid, which was the auditorium, and then two alternates of the classrooms. 
put that out for competitive bid. We did a walkthrough for many vent, uh, potential vendors. And as you see, the bids came through with Silktown Roofing coming in um, as the lowest, most responsible bidder. Silktown was our roofing contractor on the high school project and performed their work exceptionally well. They recently were the ones awarded the project to do the placement of the roof on the Stillman building. They were efficient uh, in their work. And so we want to move forward. This work will be done now. We have spoken with the building official and the fire marshal and with the uh, Board of Education uh, talking about the fact that this work can be done while people are in the building. And this way it will allow the building to come back online so that it can, the auditorium can be used for spring events and, and throughout the summer. Okay, council questions? Deputy Mayor? Just a question. I mean, if we approve this tonight, is it the goal to try to get a lot of the work done while the kids are out on spring break, if it's possible? We're going to try to deploy as quickly as possible. All of the specifications have been written. Um, they are out there. Uh, Silktown understands that we want to try to get this as quickly as possible, and so they are ready to go. It's just sourcing the materials and trying to get the manpower there, but we are gearing for this to be done quickly. Okay. Councilor Rao. Thank you guys, uh, or Sally in particular right now. Um, is there a plan to remodel or update or upgrade Southstein Middle School? The school itself? <laughs> yeah. uh, I, as far as long-term plans for renovation, um, I'll, I'll speak to that. You can go for that. Good one. evening, Mr. <laughs> Rell. How are you? Hello, everybody. Uh, with regard to a full-scale renovate is new. Silas Dean is not on the schedule for that. Um, okay. Silas Dean had a renovation back in the early 2000s. Um, one of the things we did do, however, with phase one of our um, long-range rebuilding uh, plan, we actually did a facilities assessment of Silas Dean. And not surprisingly, the high priority list at Silas Dean was the, uh, the roof. We have several sections of roof that were not addressed with the previous renovation. And we've seen this year in the auditorium specifically where it just used to leak on the stage. It's now leaking on the stage. Uh, it leaked in one of the storage areas adjacent to the stage and took down a ceiling. It was also leaking uh, through the drywall into the auditorium down onto the seats and the carpet. And then for the first time this year, we actually had a significant leak in the lobby area outside the auditorium and down the wall. So we've seen an increase in this over the course of time. But in terms of a full-scale renovation, Silas Dean is not slated right. for that. That's probably prior to the high school. It was the most recent renovation would have been Silas Dean. Silas Dean and Webb and oh, the Stillman okay. building. Yep. yep. Um, and then the roofs that are on there right now are 40 years old, so they were not touched during that renovation 15, 16 years ago. Correct. To my knowledge, they were not. And in fact, what we are trying to do this summer is through the CIP, one of the recommendations in this in the budget that you will see is to do infrared testing of the roofs so we can see where we can start plotting to have roofs that are reconditioned that have 20 year warranties instead of full replacements. That is an option to us, but we need the data to see whether or not any of our roofs qualify for that. And that's something we're gonna be doing this summer so that we really can get a handle on, especially the school roofs, which um, was new to us in physical services. I had seen somewhere that there, is the Board of Ed looking for a, uh, a possible solar array at the Silas Dean Middle School at all? Not, not to my knowledge. Okay. It had come across that there was a proposal possibly to put solar panels on the roof of Silas Dean. It hadn't come through the Board of Education. It's certainly possible. Um, I would caution, given the condition of the roof at this point in time, right. I'd be a little bit skeptical of putting up a solar array until this roof is uh, Well, is, that, is that's repaired. why I asked about the renovation. Yeah. I mean, I had seen it come through an email <coughs> that there was a possible RFP or RFQ for uh, solar panels up there and if not um, and then I had some questions about the budget source or the amount of money I don't know who best would be able to answer that we we all sat her and tried to figure it out so if and I guess there's five uh, uh, 
counts that we're looking at. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one, item 3931, right. South Dean Middle School, 3000. Right. There had been a project um, a number of years ago for an air handler that what work had been done at Silas Dean and there was some money left over from that project and that is the remainder from that project. And are these all remainders of projects or are these full the, amount? The first one from the Silas Dean is. The carpet from Charles Wright and Hamner was a previous project that had not gotten done that we had wanted to do this summer, but in collaboration with the superintendent, we decided that um, to delay that project and use that funds and funding toward the uh, roof project. The roof maintenance account is a general account that we have with the town for roofing issues. Um, the Standish House, we finished the Standish House painting and renovation. There was money left over in that project that we wanted to put toward here. And then uh, the remainder from the CIP reserve. Okay. I just want to make sure that we're not, just like being a homeowner, you're not taking, you know, the priority is the roof is leaking down on my kid's bed while they're trying mm -hmm. to sleep. Here it is, you know, the roof is leaking on the musical equipment or any kind of displays on the stage. We're not taking any money. I, I know pretty much the only one is the Charles Wright or Hanmer carpet, mm -hmm. carpet project. That's, that's new money for new project. Right. The rest is already spent money. Mm -hmm. I just don't want to take money from one project that we're just going to kick the can down the road on to, you know, to say, to put it to another project that may have been overlooked for the last couple of years. I, I know we didn't, the town didn't overlook it. Had we had Tremco up there patching and patching and patch, patching. Um, had there been any warnings about this while they were up there, or had they? Well, again, they've done leak responses in different parts of the areas, and they have noted it and have said, you know, this roof really should be replaced, um, but it was never part of a presentation to do um, as an immediate. Now with this winter, we've seen that the conditions sped up the condition of leaks to where now the leaks are more uniform and connecting versus being spotty. And that's what we're trying to utilize. Not go, moving forward, we don't want to be in this position. So that's why we're trying to get ahead and really be able to evaluate the roofs on our buildings as we move forward. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Councilor Latina. Sally, with Tremco and their contract, is, is that something that they should have been maybe suggesting to us a while ago, this infrared? Uh, they, apparently they had discussed it with my predecessor from the schools, um, but with other priorities, it wasn't, it wasn't pushed through at the time. I mean, we're always making judgments as to the priorities, and this year it, it's raised its ra in the ranks of priority. So with that being said, moving forward with maybe that particular test, mm -hmm. we can rank and prioritize so we don't kind of get caught. Yes, and we're, what we're really hoping is that the roof, the, the roof information that comes back indicates that our roofs are candidates to be reconditioned because to recondition a roof could be a third of the cost mm -hmm. of putting on a new roof. And so fingers are crossed that we fall in that category and they come with the warranties um, that we would be able to plan for uh, reef, roof reconditioning as part of CIP and operational expenses in, in uh, future budgets. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, Mike, you're, you are um, on board with the funding sources, the carpet in particular. I am. It's one of these uh, situations where you have to prioritize. And uh, we see the issue with Silas Dean as really being the top priority at this point in time. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Anything else? Okay. Seeing none, all in favor? Yes. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you all. Um, next, we have exchange of municipal property for credit towards equipment purchases, tasers. Do I have a motion? Kenny. 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 
Mr. Lesser, Councilor Lesser, do I have a motion? That. I was reading. I make a motion to authorize the sale or trade of police property consisting of donated or court ordered firearms. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Town manager. Thank you again, Mayor. This resolution authorizes a town manager through the police department to trade in certain equipment currently maintained by the department. In this case, the police are in possession of firearms that have been received through donation or a court order. Uh, the request currently is to use these firearms for credit towards purchasing new tasers for the department. And I have chief, uh, the chief here to answer any questions or give further information. Thank you. Good evening, chief. Do you have anything to um, add to that before questions? Well, just a little bit of an explanation. Uh, the guns we've accumulated over the years, as the manager said, through court orders or people just donating them to us, they're taking up a lot of space in our armory. They have to do an uh, inventory every single month according to our accreditation so it would be nice if we could get rid of them so it's kind of like a win-win here the tasers with technology as I've explained before it's um, a good portion of the tasers that we have that the officers are using are not only end of life but end of support we need to replace them and uh, it's hard getting that through the budget the the number that we really need here if we can sell these guns uh, we can now accumulate hopefully six thousand dollars a little bit more and that will get us a couple of more tasers so uh, it clean it cleans out the armory and it gets us a couple more of the newer tasers okay thank you any questions from council councilor Hurley is it a, a local town dealer that you sell these guns to? Uh, actually, uh, Lieutenant Midney is the one that handled this. He's our firearms expert. He's actually uh, federally licensed and is an appraiser. Okay. Uh, he couldn't make it tonight. So I'll try to answer your questions. Uh, yes, what he did was he, he appraised all the weapons. He had come up with a figure of about $6,350, and he got uh, a dealer they would offer us like, I think it was $6,400, $6,500. But one of those weapons, one of those firearms, sh shouldn't have been on that list. It's something that we can't get rid of yet. So it brings it down a little bit, but it's just, it's, it's the right amount. Um, he, he said that um, if he gets the approval from the council, then he could actually, um, like go out to bid and see if there's anybody else that would like to purchase them but he needs that approval before he goes through all the process okay thanks any other questions okay seeing none all in favor yes aye, aye. aye. any opposed any abstentions motion carries thank you Next, we have the exchange of municipal property for credit towards equipment purchases vehicles. Do I have a motion? Yeah, motion to authorize the trade-in of two vehicles and purchase a minivan for $26,352 from Liberty Honda, Hartford, Connecticut. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Town manager? Thank you, Mayor. Very similar to the previous resolution. We're just following our guidelines here. Uh, this will authorize the town manager through the police department to trade in two vehicles that are currently experiencing uh, ongoing and significant mechanical issues. The cost of maintenance at this time is, has begun to exceed the benefit of maintaining the vehicle. Um, we have a dealership that's offering a credit of $1,000 per vehicle um, as part of the trade-in, and we're looking for permission. So, And it's important to note that there's no cost to the town in the purchase of the vehicle as the funds are coming from the asset, asset forfeiture account. Chief okay. is also here to answer any questions. Okay, Chief. Yes, uh, and the vehicles that we're talking about were never purchased by the with town funds either. They were asset forfeiture vehicles. They were seized in drug cases uh, back when we still seized cars um, so uh, each one of them has over 150,000 miles on them they're they're no longer safe they're no longer mechanically sound so uh, I've been hounded by some of my people to replace them and um, the dealership is really just giving us a gift for a thousand dollars a piece because they're not worth 250 a piece so it saves us some asset forfeiture money and that's why we're looking for the approval from the council. 
Okay, and what is the purpose of these vehicles? There are undercover vehicles. And you're, you're taking two off the line and you're replacing it with one? Yes. Will that it, work out? Hopefully. <laughs> okay. I'm not buying another one. <laughs> All right, good to know. Um, any questions? Okay, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. We have no ordinances and resolutions for introduction, so we move back into public comment. Members of the public have five minutes to speak. Is there anybody who would like to speak this evening? Anybody who'd like to speak? Anybody? Mr. Young? Good evening again, Robert Young, 20 Copper Mill Road. As I had mentioned earlier, uh, this article in the, in the Hartford Current, Home sales were struggling. It says, Fe February slump is another sober sign of state's economics, economic ills. And it goes on and talks about how our recession from 2008 has just continued. We have never come out of it. It talks about the different, uh, how Massachusetts, who does business a lot different than we do, is booming up there. Their home prices are much, much higher. They're, they're, they're going up. They have been going up. Uh, and their employment has been going up. They're totally different than what we're doing. Obviously, the leadership is a heck of a lot better up there than it is here. And being that we're now heading back into another budget season, and we're probably looking at whatever kind of a tax increase, which we normally get. Uh, I'm sure it's going to affect us as far as people leaving the state, as far, as far as companies coming here to set up business and hire people. There's going to be a lot less, if any at all, because people like you, people like every council across this, this state and up at the state capitol, have, have, have gone in the direction of not economically doing things right for the, for, the, for the community, but doing things for others, for whatever reason it might be, and it hurts all the rest of us. And I would encourage you to start turning your, your, your ship around. Your ship has been on such a, a course for so long, and, and it's been leaving in the wake so much bad so much destruction, and you need to turn it around. And um, go back and read these newspaper articles, and you better go back and look at, look at what your history has been. Your history has been pretty poor. Now we have up at the state capitol where we're hearing that they're working on their budget as well, and the, the toll, the issue of tolls coming on board, that's going to hit everybody hard, uh, especially, especially the people that go to work. People that were going to ride on 91 and uh, in, uh, in 15 and, and, and 95 and all the other highways. If to do that, they should put toll booths right around all the cities. If they're, and every town should have a toll booth, toll gantry or whatever it's called, to make it equal. Because if towns like Lakeville don't get one, how are they going to vote? They're not going to care and we'll end up getting tolls. We don't need tolls. What we need to do is reduce our costs at the state capitol. We need to reduce our costs right here in Weathersfield. We have a, I think it was mentioned tonight that there's a, a large percent of our citizens are on that Alice, considered Alice group. Uh, you know, they're in that, that economic status that uh, is on the, on the low economic side. And we need to do something well, everything we do, we need to think about them. Because you know, when they leave, they're gonna leave an empty house behind. Not necessarily sell it. They're just gonna leave it. Be or you folks are gonna have an auction and auction their house off. 
because they didn't pay their taxes. And we've been having those auctions anyway for the last number of years, ever since Jeff Bridges came to town. And it will continue. And as it continues, we're going to see downward, downward, downward in our home prices. You're supposed to be the board of directors of this town. And you should be building value to us. And if you don't build value, why come and do what you're doing? To take care of your friends and buddies? Because you're not taking care of the rest of us. Our home prices are down. They're hard to sell homes. Read the Hartford Current. So in your budget deliberations, please consider all those people. And you know, the more the state takes from us, the more people are going to leave. And as people leave, and there's no revenue coming from them, it's going to put a bigger bind right here in Wethersfield and all 169 towns and cities across the state. And I don't think any of you people even know that. But you should be considering that. Because right here at the ground level is where, we need, where we need to hold our prices down, hold our costs down, protect those landowners, and build value to their home prices, or their home values. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak tonight? Mr. Mazzarella? Tom Mazzarella, 600 Walcott Hill Road. I listened closely to the uh, discussion on the Salestine roof and uh, didn't really get an answer to some of the questions that I threw out there about that Tremco contract. I would hope that somebody digs that contract out and reads it and maybe I'm uh, not correct in what that contract says, but I was under the impression that Tremco was supposed to be monitoring our roofs, keeping track of the condition, the leaks, uh, and so forth, in addition to doing on-call uh, minor repairs. So it seems to me it's not a lot of money, $68,000 in the in grand scheme of things, but you know, I'm questioning why we're paying these guys 68000 a year if they're not telling us, hey, this roof's ready to cave in, and you got to put it on the budget to replace the roof. Um, we heard that you know maybe some of it was attributed to uh, former personnel on the on the uh, board of ed maintenance staff, but that only accounts for the school roofs. What about the rest of the town roofs? What about this roof here? Do we know if it's going to need to be replaced next year? We're just going to wait until the we start putting buckets out and catching all the water. Um, uh, should that infrared surveillance that they want to do, should that have been included as part of the Tremco services? I don't know. But I think it warrants looking into and finding out if we're getting our money's worth. I mean, you have to keep the roofs in good shape or you're going to lose everything. But you shouldn't have surprises of... Uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, and it's not just one section of the roof, it's three. So I hope somebody uh, digs that contract out and finds out, you know, maybe I'm misunderstanding what it was all about, but that was the gist I got from the presentation when it was approved. So that they were, you know, doing a good job of monitoring our roof conditions. And, and telling us what the priorities were. So take a look. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Mr. Colantonio. <laughs> Good evening. Gus Colantonio, 16 Morrison Avenue. Uh, I guess roofs, they go bad. But what I heard it tonight, uh, I always question it. Who's going who's gonna to inspect the installation of this roof? Somebody qualified? I mean, you know, sometimes when these roofers do work, they do the, the fastest, 
way out. And that does not mean that it's the best. Somebody questioned it. It's the problem. One of the problems is it's uh, ice jams on the roofs. Yeah, it happens a lot. But not because of the roof. That happens because of uh, poor insulation. And if you just put a roof with not addressing the problem of ice jams, you're still going to have the same problem. Now, why am I saying that? I go back to when you guys reconstructed the sidewalk on my street. And I was appalled. The more I think about it, the less I like it for the people inspecting that. They didn't know anything at all. As you are aware, I said it before, and I'm going to say it again just to remind you, when the plan says remove the existing pavement in the back of the proposed bituminous, they never did it until we complained it. When they widened the road just, uh, I guess, you know, west of uh, Tifton, two feet, they were supposed to put four inches of bituminous, but they put two. So they had to go and fix it only after we brought it up. So I, I asked the question, who does inspect the work that it's done in Westfield? I mean, when you look at these roads, all of them are falling apart. You have to ask yourself why. My only solution or my only guess is that basically whenever people fix these roads, they are not really fixing it right way. You know, there is such a big difference between Wethersfield and Rocky Hill. As soon as you go from Wethersfield to Rocky Hill, it seems that there are less potholes. I wonder why. Are we getting our money's worth when we do the work in town? Sometimes I doubt it. The, the, more, the, more, I, the more I think about it and, uh, and the more I get aggravated. But anyway, thank you. Thank you, Gus. Anybody else you'd like to speak tonight? Anybody else? Okay, seeing no one, we're going to move into executive session for union negotiations. Do I have a motion? Motion to move into executive session. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, it should be a lot. 